the gastrointestinal tract is that portion of the gastrointestinal system which is the uh, hollow tubular portion and throughout its length from the oral cavity all the way to the anus the generalized wall structure of the gastrointestinal tract is uh, in broad terms uh, the same however what makes different parts of the tract differ from one another are small regional variations in one or more of the elements that make up the tract in the overall scheme of things the tract is a five-layered uh, tube the innermost layer of the tube which faces the lumen is made up of a mucosa and the mucosa in turn is made up of an epithelium and a basement membrane. Throughout much of the tract, the epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium, but there are some uh, variations. Beneath the epithelium and basement membrane, or mucosa, is a layer of varying thickness made of loose connective tissue, which is called the lamina propria. And through all of the tract, the lamina propria is characterized by both loose connective tissue and the presence of fairly large numbers of cells derived from the immune system, whose job is to perform immune surveillance uh, on material um, in the lumen of the gut or which may uh, inadvertently enter the wall of the gut uh, from the lumen. In some places, these immune system cells are gathered together in larger aggregations called lymphoid nodules, and in certain particular places, these actually form very specific uh, immune recognition structures, uh, which we'll see later. Separating the loose connective tissue of the lamina propria from the underlying submucosal connective tissue is a layer of variable thickness, but generally a fairly thin layer of smooth muscle called the muscularis mucosa. And this has um, some important consequences with regards to uh, gut motility, specifically the movement of the mucosa um, as it relates to uh, digestion and absorption. Beneath the muscularis mucosa is the submucosa. This is also a layer of connective tissue, not quite as loose as that of the lamina propria, but not necessarily very dense irregular connective tissue either. In this submucosal connective tissue, we find the major uh, arteries and veins and lymphatic vessels which supply the wall of the gut. And branches of these larger vessels uh, are seen also in the, as smaller vessels are seen in the uh, lamina propria just underneath the epithelium. The next layer is called the muscularis externa, and in fact this is a double layer of smooth muscle. Throughout much of the gut, it's composed of an inner circularly oriented layer of smooth muscle and an outer longitudinally oriented uh, layer, although there are some variations from place to place in the wall of the gut, and we'll see these later. An important feature to make note of are the presence of two nerve plexuses, or small collections of nerve cells found circumferentially around the wall of the gut. One of these nerve plexuses, called the submucosal plexus, is found at the junction between the internal uh, circular muscle layer and the submucosa, and the second plexus is found between the two muscle layers, uh, between the inner circular and outer longitudinal layers of muscle. Finally, the last layer of the gut externally is called either the adventitia or serosa. It's called the adventitia, where the external layer is made purely of connective tissue, and this is what's seen in those parts of the gut that are retroperitoneal. It's called serosa, where this connective tissue is covered by a thin squamous layer of mesothelial cells, and this is characteristic of those parts of the gut which are peritonealized. We'll now go ahead and look at the structure of the esophagus. Although the esophagus follows the general plan of the gastrointestinal tract, uh, there are some significant variations from the remainder of the tract which are worthy of note. One of these at least is immediately visible when you look at the uh, slide, or slide like this, uh, even at low magnification, and that is that the epithelium uh, differs from that of the rest of the gut, which is uh, simple columnar. The epithelium in the esophagus is stratified, squamous, non-keratinized uh, epithelium. <coughs> the same as is found uh, lining the mouth and the remainder of the oral cavity. The uh, second difference is one which we won't see until we move up until higher magnification, and that is throughout uh, two-thirds of the length of the esophagus, the muscle layer is made either entirely or partially of skeletal muscle. And in particular, the upper third has muscle layers made of skeletal muscle um, acting as a voluntary sphincter. The middle third has mixed, made of uh, striated muscle and also uh, smooth muscle. And the lower third is the muscle layers are um, smooth muscle only. 
One other feature which is worthy of note of the esophagus but isn't present on this slide, although it is present on some of the other slides you can look at, is the presence of esophageal mucus glands located in the submucosa. And uh, when you look at your slides, you should pay attention and see whether you can see these or not. Generally, they're found in the lower half of the esophagus. If we move up in magnification a little bit now then, so now we can look, and here we can see very clearly the stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium that forms part of the mucosa. The muscularis mucosa isn't uh, immediately evident to you, but it's along this area here. The submucosa extends from here to here. Connective tissue, moderately dense connective tissue, perhaps. Uh, the muscularis layer is uh, here. Now, the, in fact, the uh, two layers don't really orient as an inner circular and outer longitudinal. Rather, they orient as uh, two spiral layers with slightly different pitches to the helix. So we don't see a perfect inner circular outer longitudinal orientation. Finally, the external layer here is an adventitial layer made up of connective tissue and is not covered by a uh, peritoneum or a mesothelial layer. If we increase the magnification again somewhat, we can now examine here the uh, classic appearance of a stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. We can tell it's not keratinized because we can see pycnotic or dead nuclei in the outermost layers. So there are no additional layers of dead cells uh, out here that are anuclear, as we would find in keratinized epithelium. We can see the nuclei becoming pygnotic as the cells progress to the outermost layers. Along here is where we would expect to find the basement membrane. Now, in fact, the basement membrane doesn't always stain, in fact, rarely stains in routine hematoxin and niacin um, uh, preparations, so we don't see the basement membrane here. But the combination of the basement membrane and the overlying epithelium form the mucosa. The lamina propria, which is peeling apart here, extends from here to here, and this is the loose connective tissue layer that extends up and around the uh, epithelium, the folds in the uh, epithelium, and which, particularly elsewhere in the gut, will be um, very, very rich in immune system cells. This here is the rather robust um, muscularis mucosa. The esophagus has a pretty thick muscularis mucosa in comparison to the rest of the uh, gut, and we can see here some vessels traveling in that muscularis uh, mucosa. Beneath the muscularis mucosa, in this region here, is the submucosal connective tissue. Again, it has begun to peel apart quite a bit, but here we can see what looks very distinctly like dense irregular connective tissue with some small vessels and little bits of uh, nerve. If you look around the circumference of the esophagus, you will find larger vessels and uh, larger uh, ner bundles of nerve. Now we'll just come back in magnification a little bit so that we can see the organization of the muscle. And broadly, it appears to um, divide into sort of uh, here. We can see two generally appearing layers, one here and a thinner one on the outside here. So if we take a look at a little higher magnification in the middle here, what you might be able to see uh, once we zoom in completely in magnification here is we can see very distinct cross striations indicative that this part here is made of a skeletal striated muscle which tells us that we're in either the upper or the uh, middle third of the esophagus. We'll take a look at this region in here where there appears to be a slightly different appearance And in fact, there may be some smooth muscle interspersed among the uh, skeletal muscle uh, here, suggesting that we're probably in the middle third of the esophagus. And then as we move to the outermost part, we see here the classic appearance of striated or skeletal muscle cut in cross-section. So this is longitudinally oriented striated muscle extending down the length of the esophagus with striated muscle mixed with smooth muscle in the middle layer here indicating we're probably in the middle third of the esophagus and finally here's this uh, disorganized loose to moderately dense connective tissue that forms the adventitial layer of the esophagus.